Hi, this is James Gardner, the Cine Tech Geek, and today I've actually got a special presentation. I've actually put together uh, a whole sequence of videos on accessibility in cinema. And I wanted to start it off with a presentation covering uh, what's to come in terms of what, what videos are to come, and also just answering all the sort of questions that you might have all in one quick presentation, and to follow up with the videos to back up the information with, with more sort of visual presentations, etc. So let's get into it. Okay, what I'm going to cover in these videos and in this presentation, um, what, the, what does accessibility actually mean in cinema? Why is it so important, of course? Uh, definitions of what the different types of access, accessibility technologies and, and uh, there's also a naming convention to help uh, pe you know, cinema owners with their DCPs. There's also a white paper by Charles Flynn of DCinema Tools, uh, a must read if you're very interested in this. Um, so I'll go over that quickly. Then I'll talk about the presentation that was done at CinemaCon 2013, and I've recorded that completely. And um, uh, it's a very good presentation. Uh, to, it goes over different aspects and a lot of the technology presented from each of the vendors. And then after those videos, I've actually taken some other basically informative videos to help people um, get an idea of how some of these uh, products work and how they will actually um, work for you in the cinema. And finally, I'll get a little bit more technical and talk about where, you know, what locations uh, have access to these accessibility technologies and uh, how or how you may um, get them if you're a, a cinema owner and you want to take advantage of these, these uh, technologies. So the meaning of accessibility in the cinema domain. Well, basically, it's technologies and processes that help people with disabilities enjoy cinema. It's, it's quite, quite simple. Now, this involves um, open and closed captions. Text is displayed on screen with open captions, uh, so everyone can see the text on the screen. And closed captions is, is uh, captions, but they're personalised, and only really the person who is uh, requiring the captions is seeing the captions while other people will just see it normally on screen. Now, uh, of course, the people who would require this are therefore hearing impaired customers. Uh, these technologies are also used for foreign language presentations, the captions in a foreign language, for example, open captions for the foreign um, subtitles, or um, the closed captions for you can have your personal subtitles as well. Uh, and secondly, we've got the other, the um, hearing impaired and visually impaired uh, audio tracks. It's two extra audio tracks that come with the DCP. They're usually just one mono track and they're used for, as you can see, the hearing impaired to help them understand the dialogues. Basically a very clear uh, centre channel or dialogue channel so that the dialogue is very clear. And the visually impaired or vision impaired uh, narrator track is basically helps describe what's going on screen so if the the, the user uh, eyesight isn't very good it can help explain things that they may not be able to see on the screen so now why is it so important well many countries have legisl legislation and legal issues appearing um, Randy Smith in the video the moderator he will go over that for the mainly for the US but it's happening all over the world um, Older, loyal patrons uh, are developing accessibility issues. Uh, an example of this is the initial Walkman or iPod generation are, are having a lot more hearing issues because of those devices have, have damaged their hearing. So they're a very uh, loyal cinema goer and we want to keep them uh, coming. So it's definitely a technology to offer them. Uh, untapped consumer base, like the deaf and hard of hearing, it's more accessible to them now to a degree. So maybe, uh, you know, you could open your market to that, 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 social, that social network. Um, and it's because it's easy to market to them, they're very much into the social networking, etc. So you can get onto those um, systems and, and it's easy to, mark, uh, to, to market to them and hopefully bring them into the cinema to potentially a new market. Um, as like I was saying, it's, uh, digital has made it much easier to service these clients or the people with these uh, disabilities. And because, for example, you can have uh, one device can now cover many screens rather than in, in, traditionally with film, 
you would have uh, an open caption system would be able to be used on one screen. Well, now digital brings it onto all screens or the hearing impaired systems are now making use of uh, networks. So you might have eight or you know four hearing impaired uh, systems, but they could possibly be used in every cinema rather than having it set to one cinema. So better accessibility to the whole uh, theatre, the whole cinema, and also it's more likely that the the, the client with the, a disability can come, and it doesn't really matter at what time he comes to what session, he can still just go to any session. So that's fantastic. Um, CinemaCon. Now this is very important. Accessibility presentation, which I recorded, it was the busiest and um, it was the only presentation where it was completely full. It was standing room only, which gives you an indication of how important this issue is in terms of uh, the legis legislation and legal issues and the fact that there is an opportunity here uh, for you know opening up to new markets. So it's a very important product and if you own a cinema, you really should be on top of this and uh, I hope you enjoy my videos to, to get you up to speed. Now the DCP naming convention, there's a website called uh, digitalcinemanamingconvention.com and it's basically a website which uh, tells you or is, is like the accepted standard supported by the ISTCF committee to help people name the files so people can identify the files correctly for presentation in the cinema because there's so many different versions etc. And, and, and we need to know exactly what all the, the letters etc mean so you, you pick the right file and you know you've got the right file for the right thing and that's just the information on how to identify what is in the file uh, that you get the DCP uh, that you get so uh, very good website to, to look at so I, I encourage you to check that out I'll probably do a whole video on that at a later date in terms of the more aspects of the uh, naming convention but uh, yes uh, Charles Flynn, uh, amazing contribution to this is his white paper uh, that you can see there, Accessibility to Inclusion, a white paper. It's a must read if, you're into, if you want to know more about this. He goes into a lot of detail about how the different systems work and the ad advantages and disadvantages. So it's a must read if you're looking at that. Um, uh, it also includes detailed comparison. Uh, I've got a lot of images and uh, there's a lot of talk about the, the vendors will do a uh, demonstration, you know, or talk about their products, but he does a nice grid of the, the differences between each of them. So uh, it's fantastic for that and I must read if you're interested in buying one of the, the solutions currently available. So definitely go get that if, you, if you're into buying, uh, uh, into thinking about purchasing any of these technologies. Um, following uh, this video is the CinemaCon 2013 video. I recorded it for your uh, information so you can get up to speed quickly. It was a very interesting video uh, and basically covered uh, pretty much everything you wanted to know uh, in accessibility. I'll go into a little bit more detail in, in, in my covering of it but it's very good and I, I hope you enjoy the videos. They're quite long but very informative. Um, Th these videos um, basically cover the legis legis sorry, legislative and legal issues uh, surrounding accessibility in cinema, mainly in the US, because this is where we are and where CinemaCon is. But it's an example of what's going on around the world uh, in terms of the similar problems uh, also appearing in different parts of the world. So it's a good thing to be on top of it, so to prepare for what might happen in, if you're in other parts of the world. Um, and after that, uh, after... Um, that main the main presentation you've got then the vendors Doremi, uh, USL and Sony which will do a quick presentation of each of their technologies in this area um, and finally after those videos I actually have been taking some videos on this over the years and I will um, have a close-up look at some of the many of the, the technologies displayed there's an extra one there the rear window which isn't represented in the in that uh, set of videos but I've, I've got some video on that uh, it's, it's not I don't really talk over it's just um, images to close-up images which show the equipment and you know if you're a cinema owner you can see how it 
you might be able, how it sits and how you may be servicing it and how you might utilize it with your clients and with uh, patrons who want to see and uh, how you would deal with it with batteries and charging uh, stations etc so uh, that will help you get an idea of those technologies without having to travel all the way to a convention for example now let's have a look at uh, what locations and films are available in these technologies open caption closed captions as hi and vi now just on the open caption side and subtitles basically any current sms with a series one or series two projector in a cinema today any digital cinema is capable of displaying open captions and of course subtitles open captions and subtitles are basically the same thing uh, open captions are basically subtitles which are in the same language of the film there are sometimes other um, descriptive additions to open captions over subtitles because subtitles is just a translation of what's been said while open captions can actually have a little bit more information in it but today if you can basically if you're a digital cinema you can display open captions and subtitles and that means basically 90 percent of all screens in the primary markets are already converted so 90 percent of you know of any of the screens out there you, you should ex expect to be able to do this now this is the important part all six studios are making available all content with open caption closed captions hi and vi it's an amazing job that they're getting to do all this it's a lot of work but this is region dependent meaning that for example of course translations uh, have to be done uh, the spelling issues there's lots of extra work that has to be done per location which can delay some of this happening uh, so it, it may be a little delayed but it should be made available and they make their best efforts to make it available to all regions but pre predominantly the main regions where it's English you know the US Canada uh, UK Australia for example um, very available pretty much uh, on release all these things are available on that date now here's a, so an audio um, I, that I recorded from Randy Smith after his presentation about what the US and C Canada commitment is. So we'll just listen to that now. The top six, the MPAA studios, uh, about 100% of their wide releases come with captions now. And um, a little less than that come with the uh, descriptive narration for the blind. But they're all, they're all coming on board now. And uh, as you see the wide releases that you're going to see in first run theaters, almost all of them are, are captioned. Thanks, Randy. Now, let's have a look at um, the vision impaired and hearing impaired aspect of this. Now, um, just so we know, vision impaired or VI actually stands for vision impaired narrative description. Um, so it's a little bit, the, the two letter acronym actually means something a little bit more than the just vision impaired. Um, and it's important to understand uh, what, you know, vision impaired narrative description it really explains exactly what you're going to hear on that track. It's, it's a description of what's going on. In, over the top of the actual track because uh, as a vision impaired you may not be able to see exactly what's going on so they help you with some audio to back it up so um, but let's have a look the studios are doing a great job at this they're they're making pretty much HI and VI in all major markets available on the release date um, now the technologies to do this it's actually pretty much the same stuff that was carried over from the film days um, so see the you know the videos will cover all that from the different vendors that are, that are following but it's it's all pretty much very similar the only really need, new thing is uh, the networkable type technologies for the audio uh, has sort of made it possibly more cost effective but it's working very well um, now the studios are also working on trying to make this available for trailers but trailers have a lot of tight production requirements so don't expect all trailers to do that but they are going to try and make trailers available that'll be great too so really in this area uh, there's no real problems it's really good now let's have a look at closed captions and open captions this actual this area is a little bit more difficult um, it's more problematic due to the fact that it's a it, uh, it, it's um, more difficult people have different eyesight requirements it's, it's a little bit more like uh, 3d has problems for reasons that we we currently understand well um, closed captions open captions has a similar sort of problem but let's have a look at the investment so a lot of the cinema chains have put a lot of money in investing in trying to um, answer these requirements they've installed a lot of these personal 
uh, hearing impaired, vision impaired systems and closed caption systems, these personal ones. And to a degree, it's never been so good for accessibility because these new systems make, uh, these technologies are usually um, cinema complex wide. So it's not tied to a particular one or two screens. It's usually for the whole cinema and it typically makes it accessible to any session at any time. So people with these accessibility issues are now just part of any other customer going to the cinema. There's no real difference. And that's fantastic because uh, it really encourages a family, for example, coming along and one of the pay one of the family members has a disability and they can typically just join in with the rest of them. No, that's really good. That's because it's wireless based. So a system can be, you know, you might have a personal closed caption system and it can be used in any cinema in the whole complex because it's just using a network type uh, system to get the data to it. So that's really good, great new technology. Um, like I said, uh, customers can participate with general audience and re reduce the need for special screenings. So that's a big advantage to the cinema owners because uh, special screenings require sp special work. Special work is more time, more time is more costs. So it's a good, you know, uh, I've bought a solution now I to, to control my costs in that area. So the, the cinema owners are happy with that. But there's a problem still. Uh, closed caption is not optimal. Like 3D, it's not suitable for all. Okay, I'll go into that a little bit more later. But yes, it's, a lot of people, uh, the closed caption devices work fine, but for some people, they, it just doesn't work for them. Their eyes can't deal with it properly. And, it's, and we'll, I'll talk about it in the, in the following slide. So really, at the end of the day, we still need open captions. Uh, and this is where we get into a little bit of a problem. Now, cinemas have invested a lot in the personal cap um, accessibility systems. They don't see a need for open captions anymore as already made large investments in these personal captioning systems. Now, the deaf and hearing impaired community uh, want to bring back open captions as personal closed caption systems are not liked by all. Now, why is this? Well, the simplest explanation for this is the picture on the screen, which is 10 you know, or more meters out in front of you, and the closed captions uh, on the personal devices are completely different focal lengths. And what I mean by that is that they're either on the gooseneck ones, it's about half a meter in front of you, or in the glasses ones, it's projected about, it appears about three meters in front of you. But those, that is very different from look, focusing on the screen, to look at the screen and focusing on the text. So your eyes are basically moving backwards and forwards in the focal plane. You're, you know, uh, trying to focus on here and focus on there. And that can cause eye strain. And so some people, they just can't really do that. Their eyes aren't really, um, just can't deal with that sort of requirement. So they can't really take a lot of advantage of these close, personal closed caption systems. So, you know, there's still a need for open captions. So this is where the problem is a little bit at the moment. There's a bit of a, a comp compromise required because the cinema owners say, I've invested all this money to give you a solution that should make you happy. But there are some people who still, it's not, it's not suitable for. And they want to, you know, so there's a bit of a, a requirement here. So what's the solution? Well, the cinema owners, you know, they've done a large investment and it's never been better to a degree for accessibility, but we still have a little bit of a problem here with people who would really require open captions. And so the solution I would say is that really the best way to do that is to, for those communities to pull together and have arranged open caption screenings. Now the, these guys, if you're saying if you're, you know, cinemas are, want you to come to the cinema. If you say that you're going to come and bring a certain number of people, they of course will facilitate your requirements and put open captions on. Now, how do we get those open captions, and how available are they? But finally, on this slide, uh, I, you know, my hearing's actually getting worse as I get older, and I'm one of the, you know, as I get older, I. I you know, I possibly will require open captions. And I think, you know, the very good, loyal, um, older community of moviegoers, um, it's a growing market. And so it's definitely uh, something we need to keep an eye on. Now, open captions availability. 
Well, studios, I've spoken to a number of studios or people who are high up in the studios about this issue, and, you know, they want people to, as many people as possible to see their films. Obviously, they do. And that's why they make HIVI and closed caption data available. Now, uh, where is the open caption data? Um, well, it's actually there as well. It's actually created as part of the, the workflow to make the closed captions. It's, of course, because it's usually you're getting the transcript and you're translating it to another language. So obviously you would need the same sort of metadata that would be required for open captions. Now these uh, open caption files aren't typically uh, distributed in a DCP because they've caused confusion in the past of people putting the wrong DCPs on screen etc. But they are generally available on request from the studios. Now this is only one, you know, I'm not sure I've confirmed this workflow with one studio but is, is as I expected. In making the DCPs, part of the workflow is, of course, making the closed captions. And obviously, in that workflow, they do make open captions as well, but they do not ship it with the files. But they do make it available as a supplemental package DCP. Now, when you get a, a film, it's usually in an original version DCP, which is basically the original version as it, was, as, as it is, um, released to the, the, the vast majority of films. And you can get supplemental package DCPs, which um, you can add on top of that DCP to give you a different language, or, uh, uh, etc., or give you a subtitle of a certain language. Of course, this is also available just to add um, open captions. Now, this supplemental package, which just turns on open captions, is very small. It could be emailed or FTP'd or downloaded on the internet. So I expect uh, the studios, if not already, have done that. Some probably have. I haven't confirmed it with all, but that they can uh, make those things available. But this is very much affected by region. There's requirements for changing of spelling and other bits and pieces, which can cause this to slow down. Or some regions just simply haven't come to terms with all these new processes in digital yet. But, you know, I would you know, ask your local representation for the studios uh, and just if you keep asking it, it will come. If there's a need, it will, it will come. Because um, as I said before, the studios want as many people as possible to see their films. And if people are asking to see it in those formats, they uh, will make it available. So there, that's pretty much uh, a total overview of the story of accessibility in cinema. So following this video, there are, there are 10 or 11 or 12 videos or so that cover the presentation and also closer looks at all of the different technologies that I could get video on. So I hope you enjoy that. Uh, this is James Gardner, the Senior Tech Geek. Uh, and yes, thank you for listening to this series on uh, special series on accessibility. And after this, I should have some more on uh, particular other aspects of cinema. So I hope you enjoy all these videos that uh, I was lucky to be able to make at CinemaCon at 2013 this year. Bye for now.